Hi everyone, welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids. Today we're going to talk about building a 3 and 6 ball arsenal. Oh yeah! So for your average league bowler, why is a 3 ball arsenal ideal? Uh, I think 3 ball arsenal is ideal because first of all you want your spare ball. I use a pitch black here as a urethane but also couples as a spare ball. And then I got my idol, which hooks right in the middle. It's not too strong, but it's not too weak, right in the middle of the lineup for Storm. And then I got my big hooking ball here, the UFO, that I like to use on the fresh oil when they just dress before link. So I think these three balls is a good mix for a uh, typical league night. All right, Barco, what's your strategy for a three ball bag? Same idea as you. Um, I like to use urethane. It's dual purpose for me. If I need to hook it, I can do that, but I can also throw very straight mixed pairs. Uh, Ebonite Omni. Big hooking asymmetric solid ball, and then right in the middle is the track latitude. Really, really good for altering surfaces to give you a little bit different shape on either end of the spectrum. That makes sense. I think so. <laughs> so I noticed we both picked a very strong bowling ball at the top of our lineup. Yep. What was your uh, philosophy behind picking the UFO? Uh, I know that during league, it's always going to be fresh oil, right? They're always going to dress the lanes right before we show up. So I want this big hooking asymmetric solid uh, to really get through the fresh oil and give me a smooth shape down lane. What about for you? Same thing? Same idea. With a little bit of surface, it can help me dig into the oil and give me some control on the fresh. Where a ball like the Latitude may not be strong enough to really dig in, I might come up a little light in the pocket. So we talked about the big balls. How do we move it back to a, a weaker ball and something in the middle? My strategy is we start with the big ball, the UFO. But as soon as we're getting like half a game, one game, one and a half games in league, uh, you know the lane's gonna burn up a little bit. The oil's gonna start to disappear, right? Lots of balls are going down the lane, they're picking up oil, the, mo the oil's getting moved down to the back end. Uh, so I'm gonna go down to my symmetric solid here, the idle. Uh, it just gives me a little bit longer and a little bit sharper shape down lane. Uh, it's, good. it's gonna be a very good one-two punch in league. And once this starts to not work, I think that's the end of leap. Three games is up. Sim solids, baby. All right, I see you gotta use your urethane. You say you can hook it too. Are you using your urethane in league at all? If I'm desperate and I don't have a good look with either one of these, I know I have a lot of control and I can play pretty far left for me as a left-hander and control the pocket a little bit more. But also use it as a spare ball. I know it's gonna be flat enough through the oil. It's not gonna hook. I can make all my single pins with that. Do you feel the same way about the pitch black? Uh, definitely not. Spares only. <laughs> so being a right-hander, lots of traffic on the right side of the lane. Spares only here, uh, just because I don't carry a spare ball. Uh, this couple is really good. Very comfortable through shooting spares. And uh, if I leave a 2-8 or something, I know this will hook a little bit to get that. So that's why I carry the pitch black. So if you're only using it to shoot your single pins, why not polyester? Well, there's always an off chance that you're going to need to use the urethane up the boards, right? Sometimes the oil machine doesn't always put the pattern down properly. So off that slim chance that I need to use this to throw strikes with and hook it a little bit, I have it. So in conclusion, I think we agree on a really strong ball, something to make your spares, and then something right in between those two. As far as lead goes, uh, having these three, I think you have most of your options covered here for three games of lead. Let's go to the tourney bag! Let's start with the uh, jungles, huh? <laughs> Back to jungles tourney bag. So we got two high-end asymmetricals, solid and a pearl, right? And then we got two symmetric solids here in the middle with strong cover stocks, Axiom and Idle. And at the lower end of the symmetric solid spectrum, we've got the IQ Tour. And then down here, we got the Pitch Black, which couples for short patterns and spare shooting. All right, first off, we got to start off with a big tank. Everybody needs a tank, right? You're always going to be bowling on fresh oil, right? You're always going to be bowling on multiple lengths long, sh medium, short, uh, you're going to always need a tank. And then down here, we've got the tank, that's a pearl. So the cover stock is going to let this ball go a little bit further down lane and hook a little bit sharper than our solid tank here. So we have two different options for big balls uh, to start out with uh, the first couple of games, right? When the, when the lanes are pretty oily, pretty fresh. Down here, two in the middle, Axiom, uh, Symmetric Core, really strong cover stock. So this ball is gonna pick up really early, uh, but it's not gonna hook as much as these two, right? So you have another option for the fresh here. Idle compared to the Axiom, a little bit less, and a little bit later down lane. So this might not be able to 
be used on the fresh, but very soon after, maybe game two, three, four, down in there after the Axiom or the UFO. And then down here, the IQ Tour, it's gonna go a lot longer than the idle and be more off the spot. Uh, so this is definitely for later in the block, in my opinion. Uh, games four, five, six, uh, when you have to get left, hook it a little bit more, have the ball skid through the front part of the lane. Uh, this is a great ball for that. So there you have it. You got my five steps here of reactive. And of course you got the pitch black, short patterns, Gotta really control the break point, uh, very flat off the spot, and also cups for spares because it can go dead straight if you just right up the back. That's it? What about uh, the surfaces? You ever change those? Alright. UFO, you know, you don't wanna keep this too shiny, right? It's gonna shine up with lane shine pretty easily because the, the, co the cover is so porous, it's gonna really soak up the oil. Uh, so I want, always want to keep this at like 1K or 2, uh, super clean, super fresh, but not too dull, right? Because it's already going to hook early as it is. The Pearl, Halo Pearl, uh, I always like to keep polish on it, 4,000 or polish. The ball is going to go down the lane pretty far and then make a pretty hard left turn into the pocket. Idle, uh, I always keep it around box, 3K, uh, just right in the middle of my bag. This is my favorite ball, this is the ball that gets the most use. Uh, so I always want to keep it at 3K. Uh, Axiom a little bit duller than that because I want it to be a little bit earlier than the idle. So this is going to be one or two depending on where I'm bowling. And IQ Tour, uh, we're always going to go four, maybe polish if we're bowling on a little bit drier conditions because it does go longer on its own and we want that really to hit the corner down the lane. Pitch Black, uh, it's always 500 or 1K for me. I always want it to hook really early and be very controllable. So as you can see, Previous vid again, urethanes, polish, don't really mix. So I'm always keeping this 500, 1K. Obviously, during practice or whatever, if I need to alter it a little bit, up or down, uh, one pad or the other, I'm gonna do that. But as far as going to a tournament, this is how I'm going, like this. How's that, Barco? All right, I'm satisfied. Good. Be gone. All right. So do we always go through this progression, or can we kind of work our way back at any point? Uh, great question. Yeah, I'm not always starting with the UFO. Uh, you know, this is just a very starting point for me for medium and longer patterns, but most of the time, uh, I'm gonna start right in the middle here with the Axiom and Idle. Uh, this is what's gonna help me read the lanes uh, because if I use the Axiom or Idle, I can go up or down, right, depending on what I see. Uh, so usually in warm up, I'm using a combination of these three. Uh, to see what I have out there, depending what looks the best. And as the day goes on, I can either ball back up if I if I need a little bit more hook, or go down if I need less hook. Not always going one, two, three, four, five. You know, you can start in the middle, go both ways. That's what I that's what I recommend. Marco, Mark, come back here. All right, all right. All right, want? the real bag is done. Let's see what you have to offer. All right, my turn. Alright, welcome to my tournament bag. So let's start at the very top. We got the Hammer Redemption Solid, Redemption Pearl, Deviate Verge, Track Latitude, Hammer Fugitive, and of course, the Emotion. Alright, so let's start with the tank, the uh, Hammer Redemption Solid. I'm going to try using this on the uh, fresh oil. It's going to really dig in, give me a controllable shape. The next in the progression is the Redemption Pearl. I have the same layout on it. The only difference is it's going to be a little bit longer through the oil and a little bit more responsive, a little bit sharper when it hits the break point. Moving down from that, uh, Deviate Verge. Uh, just a smooth, controllable, symmetric solid ball. Somewhere in the middle of the bag, I have options on either direction. Good ball to have in your bag. Next step down is a Track Latitude. Similar shape to the Verge, but a little bit less hook overall. So it gives me a good step down if this one starts to burn up a little bit too early. Last in that progression is the Hammer Fugitive. Really clean through the front, but not too sharp down lane. It gives me a little bit of control for a Pearl Ball that I don't have in a Redemption Pearl. A little bit sharper, this is a little bit smoother shape. And then of course, the U-Motion, if I need to play the ditch and I need hook, this one's in play, but I also use it for my spare, so it's dual purpose. Question, Barco. Redemptions? Yeah. You only have a six ball arsenal here to work with. Sure. Are you sure you want to have two of the same core? Absolutely. For me, I don't like to see a lot of difference side to side. The difference between these two is more front to back. This gets a little bit further down the lane before it makes its shape. So similar in terms of boards of hook, 
but this one just a little bit longer and a little bit sharper, and yeah. that's what you like to see. Exactly. All right, fair enough. <laughs> well, one more question. Sure. You're left handed, right? Last I checked. Okay. I figured that a lefty would err towards more controlled shapes to stay away from the more sharp back in motion. So, two pearls? Can you elaborate on the two pearls? So, with pearl cover stock, we're not necessarily talking about sharp, we're talking about stronger cover stocks. Taking surface of these can make them earlier than their solid counterpart. So, a lot of times with a ball like the Fugitive, I'm only going to use it if there's a lot of lefty traffic. So this is like a last resort if this is too early. Then at least I know I have something to go to. But it's also a controllable ball when you put a lot of surface on it. I've used that many times before. Great answer, Bars. Thank you. I know you love the Euro thing. You use it all the time. How come you don't have two of you? I don't like having that as part of a normal tournament lineup. If I know I'm bowling on short, I think it's a great idea because that gives me two different Euro thing looks. But as far as unknown pattern, yeah. that gives me less options to attack that pattern. So you're saying two urethanes would be too close? Too close on most patterns, yes. So in order to fill out an arsenal and not have overlap, it's, really, it's a really good idea to put all your bowling balls into a graph. Graph? What graph? Let's take a look. So this is an example of the type of graph that we would use to plot the bowling balls that we have in our bag. So on the bottom we have the hook potential, and we've numbered that 0 to 10, and on the side we have the breakpoint shape number 0 to 10. When we talk about breakpoint shape, we, we talk about early or late. So for me, my tank is going to be in the bottom right, the redemption solid. So usually this type of ball will be in the lower right portion of the graph. So for me, my ace and pearl, a little bit less hook and a little bit sharper breakpoint. And for me, that ball is the redemption pearl. Next ball is a symmetric solid. For me, that's the deviate verge. A little bit less hook and a little bit smoother shape. So the next step down from that is also a symmetric solid. It's the track latitude. A little bit less hook, just at a smoother shape. The next ball down from that is the hammer fugitive. A little bit longer down the lane, a little less hook. And finally is my U-motion, the earliest and the least amount of hook. All right, my turn for the graph. Ah! What? Nothing. <laughs> Jeez. My six ball arsenal, uh, first up, the UFO. This ball's gonna hook the most, so 10 out of 10 hook. And the earliest. So it's gonna be in the bottom right corner. Next up, Halo Pearl. Uh, it's gonna go a little bit further down lane and definitely much, much sharper. Next up is the Axiom. Uh, strongest symmetric ball I've ever thrown. It's gonna fit just below the UFO. And then my favorite ball, the Idol. It's gonna fit right dead center in the bag. That's what makes this ball so great. Go up, down, side to side with this one. Awesome. Right below that, IQ Tour. A little bit longer, a little bit sharper. Another benchmark. And then finally, the Pitch Black. Super early and not much hook at all in the bottom left corner. So when you guys are filling out this graph at home, uh, obviously you won't have the same balls as us, but try and scatter the graph like we did here. Have a nice variety of balls. Uh, fill each quadrant as best you can. That'll give you the most versatility, the most different options out there. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, there's a link to the graph in the description. Take a look, fill it out for yourself, see what you have, see if you're missing a ball uh, here or there. Uh, like, subscribe. See you in the next vid. Yeah.